Hello my friends! The first mistake nobody ever talks about is having the wrong mindset as a fighter. Or let's say XB laner, since many tanks also go to the XB lane nowadays. If you wanna be the MVP all the time, the XP laner role is the wrong one for you. Let's have a quick look at my latest tier list for the XP lane. What is the first thing that you notice? Yes, most of the heroes who are high on the list are heroes, who can either sustain a lot or have great regen abilities. By the way, I would love to know who is your current favorite hero for the XP lane. Let me know in the comments. This is because the XB laner often acts as a second tank basically. And the nature of a tank is that you die sometimes. Not always though, since you're also more likely to get assists than kills, which are higher valued, you often end up with a gold medal if you're good, but not with the MVP medal, because your assassin or marksman got the most kills. The important question here is, what is more important to you? Being the MVP or winning games? If winning games is more important to you than your medal, the XB laner role is a role where you can thrive in. I honestly... I honestly don't really care if I'm the MVP or not. I'd rather have a win rate of 70% with a bunch of silver medals stacking up in front of me than having a win rate of 50% with a bunch of losing MVP medals. When you have this mindset and always try to do what is best for the team, you can rank up very far. It's no problem if you die when your team can eliminate 3 or more enemies because of it. Yes, I know before you start to scream you only have noob teammates. This is basically the second mistake you should avoid at all costs expecting that your allies will come to help you on your lane. One of the strongest traits all of the best XP laners share is that they can survive ganks on their own even in the 1v3 situation. You just saw an example how I survived the 1v3 with Uranus easily. Huh? As XB laner I would always suggest to my team that they should focus to help the marksmen on the gold lane. Even the best of them like 1-1 or Beatrix have a hard time when they are getting ganked. As XB laner though, you can survive basically everything if you're careful enough. If you start to push mindlessly without knowing where the enemy is, you will end up dead many times of course. Always assume that the enemies will come to your lane to gank you when you don't know where they are. Is this the case? Play defensive, hide in a bush near the minions to not lose any farm and wait what will happen. Once you know that the enemies are somewhere else, you can continue bullying your counterpart. I basically talked about the mistake already that I wanted to mention later. But anyway, and even if you're getting ganked non-stop, if your team is constantly supporting the marksman on the gold lane and therefore becoming extremely fat, take the bullet for the team and end up with a shitty silver medal. Who cares? If the marksman in your team is not a complete idiot, they will be able to destroy the whole enemy team non-stop. So don't get frustrated about that and see the positive side, that you will win the game most likely because of your sacrifice. Now before we continue, I want to tell you about an awesome giveaway. The Mobile Legends Southeast Asia Cup, or MSC 2022 in short, is held this year in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And together with Aptoid, I'm giving away 5 double tickets for the MSC's Grand Final, which is taking place on June 19th. The prize only includes the ticket, but not the trip to Kuala Lumpur. All you need to do is register using the first link in the description and tell us why Mobile Legends is your favorite game. The 5 best answers will win the double tickets for the Grand Final. Aptoid will be there in person, so feel free to say hi and learn more about the App Store. See ya there! Now we talked a lot about mindset and psychology, there are also a lot of general game mechanic mistakes you should really avoid. One mistake way too many people make is not last hitting the minions. If you're not last hitting any minion, you get 141 gold. And if you last hit every minion, you get 179 gold from the first wave. This is a gold difference of 38. That doesn't sound that much. But if you do the math for 10 waves that you can clear in the first 5 minutes, then you suddenly have a difference of 380 gold that you could get for free. Do you really want to miss out on that free gold? I don't think so. Just don't be too obsessed with last hitting the minions that you put yourself in danger. If you die because you tried to last hit a minion, you're not helping anyone with it. The next mistake I see so many players do is not defending their lane. As side laner, your number one job is to keep your turrets alive. Why? Well, once your first turret is away, this whole area becomes open for your enemies to gank you away. You can't push anymore without being afraid that the enemy will gank you and you have no place to retreat anymore. Keeping the first turret alive throughout the whole game is rarely happening of course. Because the longer the game goes, the faster you can destroy it. But your first goal should always be to destroy the second turret of the enemy before they destroy your first one. But if you leave your lane undefended because you run around the mid lane or you enter the complete headless chicken state and rotate to the other side of the map, hey, what the fuck are you doing here Leslie? Your counterpart will start laughing at you and happily destroy your turrets. 
So please, Bruh. always keep your number one priority in mind. And that doesn't mean though, that you should stick to your lane forever. Mobile Legends is not a 1v1 game, where you just have to fight against your counterpart on your lane. When the turtle spawns next to your lane, or your jungler is being invaded on your side of the map, you have to support your team. I'm going to show you the perfect example. Here I just cleared my wave while the turtle spawned. My jungler unfortunately died before, so I'm providing vision now and spam the request backup button. Because of my vision, Gushen and Angela can see that Johnson and Belmond are there. So Angela ults me to start a blood festival. Ruby together with Angela is really hard to kill. So I can focus Balmond, who is the enemy's jungler, and survive until Angela's ult is done. Afterwards I have to retreat and teach Johnson the lesson why you shouldn't chase anyone when you are low. Gushen got the turtle and we managed to kill three enemies. If I would've just stayed on my lane, Gushen and Angela wouldn't have any chance to take the turtle. And even if they tried, they both would've died. This is the perfect example why you should rotate and help your team whenever possible. Just always keep one eye on your lane and don't rotate to the other side of the map. Even if your counterpart does this, stay on your lane and push the hell out of the ugly turrets of the enemy. Next I want to talk about a mistake that at least 90% of you does. You're not taunting the enemy. By taunting I don't mean that you should say bad things about your counterpart's mother or anything. But spamming your recall button or use annoying emotes will help you out a lot. Many players have a very high temper when playing Mobile Legends. So annoying them is a very good way to let them make mistakes. Again, I show you a very good example. Here I'm playing Uranus and my counterpart is Gwenevue. By the way, I bought the Uranus skin just before the match in the draft pick phase. So you can see the most awesome Uranus skin in action. Since I bought Tough Boots early on, I had enough magic defense against her in the early game. So after she used the ult and couldn't kill me, I just casually laughed at her. And she got very annoyed about this. She got so annoyed after 7 minutes that she missed her jump in first skill and in the end just died because everything was on cooldown. She kept trying to kill me, but as you can see, she had absolutely no chance. You can also talk the whole enemy team if you feel confident enough to still play good while being focused. A behavior like this puts a target on your back of course. But if you head into a 1v5 just like you see now and manage to not only survive it, but even wipe out the whole enemy team with the help of your teammates and then put a simple XD in the chat, you will be able to break the spirit and mind of the enemy. Two minutes later, the game was done. Ling didn't even want to defend the base anymore, although our Hanabi only had 1 ah. HP. This is the magic of well-used psychology. It can backfire of course. If the enemies manage to kill you, they will gain a confidence boost. So again, only do this if you are confident enough that this will work out. The next mistake also involves a little bit psychology. And that's not freezing the lane when it's possible. What is freezing the lane? Well, it's quite simple. When you are stronger than your counterpart in the early game, you can simply hide in the bush next to the enemy's turret or even stand right in front of it. Since you are stronger than your counterpart, they can't get out of the turret and are out of reach to the minions. You are in range though. So while the poor little creatures beat the crap out of each other, you simply stand there, collect gold and XP, while your counterpart gets nothing. If your counterpart comes out of the turret, you simply attack that poor bloke. This is of course super frustrating for your counterpart. And they might start to take the jungle creeps away from the jungler, which is a perfect scenario for you. Freezing the lane would also work theoretically in the mid and especially in the late game. But in order to make this work, your whole team needs to commit to this. And in solo queue, this is impossible. So that's only something you can really use in the laning phase, since you are in the 1v1 situation almost all of the time. Now since you watch until this point, I want to show you a bit of appreciation. Here you have a quick fire of mistakes that didn't make the top 10, but are still very important to avoid. Mistake 1. Jungling. Stay away from the jungle cre- Stay away from the jungle creeps, especially in the first 5 minutes of the game. They are the only source of farm for your jungler except kills. So if you want that they leave your minions alone, do the same and leave the jungle creeps alone. The only creep you are allowed to touch is the gold crab. Mistake 2. Chasing enemies. As I showed you already one time, chasing low enemies will backfire many many times. Don't follow the low enemy alone behind the first turret or into the enemy's jungle. The chances are very high that the other enemies will come and happily shoot you off to the moon. Mistake 3. Initiating teamfights without backup. A teamfight includes the word team already. So if you fight alone against the enemy's team, it's not a teamfight, it's just you feeding the enemy. You can only do this kind of things if you're either over farmed or the enemy is completely under farmed. Mistake 4. Not building anti-heal items yourself. If the enemy has strong regen heroes, don't just rely on your Roma for anti-heal items. Most XP laners should build dominance eyes in this case. 
It's not only a great item against regen heroes, but also against marksmen and in general all heroes with physical damage. Mistake 5. Not securing the Lord. If your team is taking the Lord, you as a XP laner can of course help attacking it. But if there's the danger that the enemies could sneak up on you, I would highly recommend that the Roma and you the XP laner defend the Lord and distract the enemy. It's usually enough when the marksmen in the jungle take care of the Lord, while the rest of you defend it from the enemy. Mistake 6. Go for an all damage item build. As XP laner you play most likely a melee hero. The nature of a melee hero is of course that you are getting very close to the enemy. Having a build without any defensive items makes you way too squishy though. And you end up that many times before you could even hit the enemy once. So at least pick one or two defensive items according to the enemy. For example Athena's shield against burst mages, dominance eyes against marksman and regen hero etc. Quick fire done. Woo! Nice. Next we have mistake number 8. Not pushing when there's a chance. I talked about pushing already a lot in this video, so I make it short here. If you have the chance to push because your counterpart is dead or runs around on the other side of the map for some reason. Push, push, push. Your lives become so much easier if you destroy the turrets of your enemy, because your counterpart is nowhere safe anymore and you and your teammates can easily pick up that guy afterwards. So if you have the chance, push. The only thing that you have to keep in mind of course is that there are more enemies than just your counterpart. If you kill the poor bloke and want to push, the first thing you need to check is the minimap, which is something so many players never do. I said it already countless times in other videos. But still, always check the minimap. You want to push? Check the minimap if you can see the enemies. If not, expect that they are on the way to you. If you want to gank your counterpart, do exactly the same. I spent most of my time staring at the minimap. This is by the way the reason I made it so big, which I would also highly recommend for you. The minimap tells you always everything you need to know. When you know where all or at least almost all enemies are, you can execute your plan like killing your counterpart. Afterwards you check it again if you still know where all enemies are. If you know it and they are not on the way to you, push. If not, stay in the bush and be ready to retreat. You can also see of course when your allies are on their way to you. So you can try your best to not scare the enemy away before they arrive. I could make 1000 more examples here, but this is not a minimap guide. Just always remember to check where are your allies and where are your enemies. And to know where are the enemies, you need what? Exactly. Vision. This is one mistake so many XP laners or players in general make. They are not thinking about providing vision. I already showed you in the example with the turtle how important it can be to provide vision for your team. Generally every player is able to do that, but Romos and XB laners are especially suited for this job. They can enter the enemy's territory to provide vision and escape quite easily without the risk of getting killed by the enemy. This is something you should do constantly in the mid to late game. Your squishy allies can farm without risk, can steal the bus from the enemy or simply come to you so you can ambush the enemy together. Everything is much easier if you have the vision on the map. Now since you watched the whole video, I have an exclusive super special 11 mistake for you. And this mistake is not watching my tier list video right now. So you know which are the best heroes to pick right now. See you over there.